Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome to a new season of the Elder Scrolls Legends. Uh, the original plan was to um, post a deck with the new Hisgrove card, so a ramp deck. But unfortunately, the card was bugged and I got the same card like last month. So not a chance to post a Hisgrove ramp deck. And we will start the season with a pretty aggressive archer deck. Starting here with Mournhold Traders. For two mana you get a 4-4 four, four card. Playing against another archer. Start with the Ungolim the Listener. Three Brotherhood Assassins in the deck. So the point of the deck is of course hitting our opponent a lot early on. And then uh, just finish the game with our pretty hardcore late game cards. Like the Triumph Jar, Tuscard, Packmaster, or the Blood Dragons. Dune Smuggler will help us a lot early on, so our strong creatures can still attack even if he's dropping some guards in the lane. They cannot hope to outwit Oskinsman. me. Well, that doesn't matter. For the black hand. Keep on attacking. See this coming, eh? Down to 22. And let's use the Murkwater Witch here to reduce the stats of the Oskin spell. Also, it is then possible to use the Leaf Lurker in the next couple All of turns. Oh, that was not too bad. That was not too bad. I so we're clearing the Pyromancer. Very important to stay ahead in this matchup. Let's heat things up. Another Pyromancer. Must be nice. If I fall, the hist will be clearly. Seriously. Come dance with death. <laughs> Forest is more close. We are now falling behind. Getting another card. There's a Moonlight Werbert. Wonderful. We'll drop it in the right lane, but we have the Dune Smuggler and most likely shift in the left lane then. Just that he uh, will not attack it with the Pyromancer. But he's now at 5 Magicka and can play a Solus Marshal. There's also a Moonlight Warbat. Well, I don't care. Our board is definitely stronger. Come dance with death. Lumark, take you. Pushing him down to 16. We are back to 26. We we'll also drop the fighter skill recruit here. On the right, so we would take out his fighter skill recruit, most likely. If I fall, and then if we're getting another dune smuggler, we can shift another minion into the right lane. Otherwise, we will most likely play the Solest Marshal and the Jarl next turn. Because we will stay ahead here. He's going back to 20 and we are at 22.
Oh, there comes the Ogrim. That one can't get cover. Cliff Racer is pretty nice in this situation. Dropping the Solus Marshal. We are hitting his 7 4. Then pushing him down to 12 there. Not getting a prophecy. We are back to 27. And a bit more damage. He's down to 5. Breaking the last rune. There's a prophecy. That's most likely a fighter skill to recruit. Or another war bat. There is a fighter skill to recruit. So he's targeting the war bat here. But still, he is at 5. So he would need some huge help. Still have 14 damage on the board. Vernon Pillage is good. The Night Mother will die. Definitely good. That keeps him one life. But we might get some decent stuff out of the jar. That is for sure. Like the Brotherhood Assassin. Ooh, another one. That is great. We will just push him down here. To one life. Dropping the Brotherhood Assassin, Waiting. getting another Solvest Marshal. I lurk in the shadows. Wait. And the fight is good we could. I'm feeling lucky. Can for sure kill the Leaf Lurker here on the left with the Ungulim. He has the Werbat to clear the Solus Marshal, but that's still 10 damage on the board. Burn and Pillage might help him, but even then he can just break another rune. He would deal 2 damage and we still have 4 minions then on the board. Ooh, we're getting the burn and pillage. For the black so going to the face. All is giving up, I see. Oh, a swift rage. So back to nine. But that's still not enough. Can you have? Ooh, another burn and pillage. That was decent. Oh, swift rage. That's enough. Just pushing the Jarl here and using the Swift Rage. Interesting enough, he's playing a more or less the same deck as we do. Second game, and we are facing a mage. Oh, it's a bad starting hand. We are going first. We need some small minions here. Well, Murkwater Witch, that's not the strongest one. Would have loved to get something else. Also another Zora's Marshal. And the Test Guard. That's one bad starting. Well, the Imperial Grunts are pretty good targets for the Witch. You're also getting a Trader. So why not play that of one instead I'm of on the Witch? Side. We can then drop the Witch on the right lane, clearing the Imperial Grunt on the left. Like to say hello. And still have a guard to prevent the Trader from taking damage. 
Acknowledged. Four in his face. We need to be ahead at turn five, so we can drop the Soul West Marshal and maybe drop the Avenger here for free. Then we're so sitting us for one and for four. Imperial reinforcements. Some decent stuff. He might be dropping a divine favor next turn. Let's drop another Milk Water Witch and another Trader. And if he's going for the divine favor, we want to have the High Rock Summoner gone. Still pushing more damage than he will. Cunning ally. Let's shed some light on the problem. Getting the firebolt. I hear and obey. And will you take the rune here? Nope. No rune for him. That means we are just hitting the Didn't face. See this coming, eh? So he is down to coming, eh? 17, not getting any profitly there. And we're dropping a Soul Rest Marshal and the Avenger on the left. Might be using the Fireball on the Witch, so he can take out the trader. Oh, the Divine Favor it is. Clearing the 4-4 here. I have we can clear his guard with the Solus Marshal. Still have the trader on the board. And we would need all the Imperial Grunts to take out our Avenger. And even then it will live. Another Firebolt. There it is. Not too bad. But with double Housekins, man, we are giving him a lot of trouble. Didn't see this coming, eh? He's already down to 13 and the Housekins, man, will deal another 6 at least. They cannot hope, they to, have cannot hope to have with me. The Tesca then will finish the job most likely with another 6 damage into his face. Divine Favor is of course a nice card. But without the proper board, it is not so great. There's a Vindicator dealing 2 damage on the Soros Marshal. That means he's taking 10 damage here. That's more or less the end of the game. Didn't see this coming, eh? Because the House Kinsman will deal another 3 damage each when they die. So he needs life back. We are dropping the Triumph Jar, getting another two cards. Well, third house kinsman. Can't come back from that. Even some healing potions won't help him much. A powerful blow. Well fought. Uh, it's a good day to oh, giving up. GG. And that's the conclusion of today's episode. Thank you for watching. If you like my content and want to see more of it, check out my other stuff on the channel or simply hit the thumbnails on the end card you are seeing right now. You can always reach out to me in the comments with feedback or deck requests, so don't be shy. Last but not least, if you want to support me, you can do so in various ways. Subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter and Twitch, or use my affiliate partners, which can be found in the description box below the video. It will allow me to keep the channel and new content coming in on a regular basis. Until then, see you in my next video and goodbye.